Chucky was work. Uh, speaking of Fright Night, uh, that's one of my favorite films that you've been in. And, uh, Woo! Seriously, it's fun. It's so fun. How was how it working with uh, these those actors in there, and how was the experience, besides being fun, like any good stories from that, which I know you have? Well, the, the, I think the, the, the tale, the t what tells the tale is that right now, I'm still in touch with all those people, okay, with the exception of Roddy McDowell, who passed away sadly. Um, I saw Bill Ragsdale, William Ragsdale, who played the young guy, Charlie, uh, a couple of nights ago. My wife was doing a show in New York, and uh, Bill came down from his home just outside the city and came to see the show, and we talked for a while. Whenever we do conventions together, we always go out to dinner and hang, and we laugh. It was one of the great uh, redeeming, not redeeming qualities, one of the great uh, parts of the experience that was great about Fright Night was that everybody got along and we also had a great time together. A lot of laughs. Um, it, was, it was a lot of fun. That's fantastic yeah. to hear. I'm really happy to hear that. Uh, speaking from the film itself, do you have any funny memorabilia from? That film? I'm curious. You have the cape? You got any of No, I don't have any of the clothes. I had a lot of the clothes for a while. Yeah. And then, you know, it was the 80s. I, you remember your 80s clothes, right? <laughs> <laughs> you still have them? That sweater. Yeah, that sweater. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I, I don't. I have a, a box of, um, that looked like a little coffin that uh, Guy Michael went in the head of the studio gave everybody that had a cross and a, and a stake in it. And I still have that, but that's all. I do have some stuff from Nightmare Before Christmas. I have a bunch of Jack's heads. I have the blackboard that Jack writes the formulas on. Oh, wow. I have that. I own that. Um, a couple of producers sent that stuff to me. We have another question over here. Hi. Hi. Nice costume. What's your name? Well, I'm uh, Dread Pirate Roberts, obviously. <laughs> Uh, another, this is uh, similar to the dual question, the dueling question. I never worked with Andre. Um, but I spent a lot of time with Andre. Uh, we were all together on the uh, location up in Sheffield, uh, England, which is up in the sort of North Yorkshire, South Derbyshire area, Midlands of England. Very isolated. We were in a hotel, the only hotel there. Um, we all hung out there. There was another, that was another a lot of fun movie to do. Uh, and Andre was around all the time because Andre was shooting a lot of his, the, most of the exterior stuff we shot up there. Uh, I, I had no scenes with Andre in the movie, but uh, I did have dinner, we had dinner together every night, uh, either in Rob Reiner's room or downstairs in the hotel. Uh, and he was one of the most memorable human beings I've ever known, not because of his size, but because of the way he dealt with his size, which was he, he was completely self-possessed, uh, completely self-possessed as a human being. That is, he, he had no self-consciousness, he didn't put on any airs, he was totally who he was, which was generally very jolly, a lot of fun, an interesting guy, very smart, um, and I don't know if you guys, how many of you guys read Carrie Ellis' book? Um, I'm, I'm writing a book, by the way. Um, which hopefully will be out sometime next year. Fantastic. And um, in it I tell the story of uh, my children and Andre. I don't know if you guys have ever heard this. Well, it's in Carrie's book, it'll be in my book, but I'm going to ruin, this is, I'm going to ruin book books by Spoiler telling your story. Okay. This is hilarious. So, um, I'm going to make The Princess Bride, and I can't take my family with me. I have two young children, a, a three-year-old and a, a sorry, three-year-old and an 18-month-old, uh, two girls, and uh, they couldn't come with me in the beginning because we were going to be out in the middle of nowhere in a hotel, nothing for them to do. So they were going to join me when I when we moved to London to shoot the interiors of the movie. And so I was explaining to my my girls, my daughters, three and a half and two. Okay, uh, I got it straight. Um, I was explaining to my daughters what, what I was going to be doing. I said, I'm going to be going to make a movie and I'm going to be a prince. Nothing. And uh, there's a princess in the movie, 
Um, and, and there's going to be like swords, and there's going to be ships, and and then I said, and there's, there's, there's going to be a giant. And then, a giant? There's a giant in the movie, Daddy. How big is the giant? Is he as big as a house? Is he as big as a car? Can, can he pick you up with one finger? How, just, how big is? Well, this was the beginning of the Andre obsession <laughs> with my two daughters, right? Any time, I literally was, I, and I, you know, like, I'm in England now, I call at least two or three times a week to speak to my, my former wife and my two, two daughters, and when I'd get on the phone with them, I'd say, Hi, honey, it's Daddy. Hi, Daddy, where's the giant? <laughs> How big is the giant? Is it as big as a house? Is it as big as a car? Can he pick you up with one finger? Um, can he push you over and step you on your head and you squash it? How big is the giant, baby? How big is... This went on for about two months. Right? Every time I call home, the same thing. So finally, they arrive in England. They're coming off the plane. They're coming down the the, run, the gangway, and I'm I'm thrilled to see them. I haven't seen them in months. I miss them terribly. I go to hug my oldest daughter. And I go, "Hi, baby. I love you, Daddy. Where's the giant?" <laughs> so I realize that I've got to introduce them to Andre at some point, because otherwise this is going to be the tale of the rest of my life. <laughs> so I go to Andre and I said, do you mind if I bring the kids by someday when I'm not working and you're working? And he said, oh, no boss. If I called everybody boss. So the day came when they were shooting the scene um, in a place called Burnham Beaches, where um, Andre is part of the brute squad and he rescues Wesley. I mean, uh, 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 Idio. And uh, Andre had a very large makeup trailer because he couldn't fit into the regular trailer, couldn't fit into the chair. Um, and so they had a special trailer that was probably maybe a half again the length of this stage and maybe another half again width of the stage. And he had a makeup table at the end and he was sitting at the end and we were coming up. The stairs, I had one of my daughters in my arms, and my former wife had one. And we get up to the top of the steps, and we turn the corner, and Andre's over there. And I went, hi, Andre. And Andre was sitting there, right? And he got up. <laughs> and they looked. <laughs> and they looked. <laughs> He was a huge human being. 
with an enormous capacity for um, drink. <laughs> <laughs> Which was, he was not an alcoholic. It, it's just that his blood volume was, you know, extraordinary. So it, it, he could drink, you know, 10 bottles of wine, nothing. He was in pain a lot, too, because he had a bad yeah. back. He, it, over the years, of his body, from the wrestling and from the, his size, uh, took a terrible toll on But he was an extraordinary guy. Yeah. That was right. Thank you for sharing that with us. That was a good Great story. Okay. Who's next? Your hand went over really fast. You are ready. Okay. Hi, what's your name? I'm Jennifer. Where are you from? I'm from Nashville. Uh oh. Hi, Jennifer. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Question? Yeah. So, um, you talked about Taylor Two Cities and how you enjoyed the book before you actually made it. Did you read Princess Bride in anticipation of the film? And if you did, is there anything in the novel that you wished had made it to the screenplay? Um, and those of you who read the book are probably aware that it's darker than the movie. The movie is a much lighter affair. It still has its you know component elements and the basic story. Um, and uh, the book was originally written by William Goldman um, for his daughters. Uh, he went into them one day and said, I'm going to write a book for you. What do you want it to be about? And one of them said, The Princess. And the other one said, A Bride. And so that's how it came about. Uh, and it was to Bill Goldman the most personal thing he ever wrote. And he wrote, you know, Butch Cassidy and Sundance Kid and The Old President's Men. Um, you, you name it, Marathon Man, I mean, he was a great, great, great screenwriter and writer. Uh, and uh, I read uh, the book back in the late, early 70s, when Robert Redford owned it. Uh, Robert Redford had an, uh, an option on the story, and uh, he couldn't get it made. And uh, I loved it. I just thought it was great. Redford was working with my another one of my former wives, and, and he gave it to her to read, and she gave it to me to read, and we just loved it. Flipped over, um, and so I was like, you know, I'm a huge fan of the book, and had hoped that somebody would make a movie of it. And then I heard that Rob was doing it with Bill Goldman. Um, so yeah, uh, and. Uh, there were things about the darker side of the, movie, the book that I missed, but once the movie came out, I didn't miss it anymore. That the movie became The Princess Book. Mm -hmm. This young man has had his hand up for a while. What's your name again? Uh, Jake, I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. I was introduced to Princess Bride like that once. <laughs> I am... Um, um, at first, I had one question, if the Princess Bride is based off a book, or is it just a made up film, but I guess, thank you over there, you gave me the answer to that. <laughs> but I guess I'll skip to my only one question. What's it like that Jack, um, you voiced in A Nightmare Before Christmas, is a different version of Slender Man, since he's based off the creepypasta internet, and he had a lot of video games, and he has even his movie we got last year, which was a dark, which was a failure. I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> I don't know who's going to be I'm sorry. I think it was like an internet meme, I think, mean, Jenny, oh. and it looked similar to you. Oh, so that's uh, what it is. I mean, as far as I knew, the Nightmare Before Christmas was a story that Tim Burton came up with, with the company drawing. Slender Man came out way, way after uh, uh, Nightmare Before Christmas. Storybook, and then it became.